Tragedy knows no timetable. It can strike day or night, often without warning, as the employees on the night shift of a grocery store in Roseville, California, discovered on April 18th of 1992. Bell Air Shoppers, Bell Air Market will be closing in 15 minutes. Thank you for shopping with us. Have a nice evening. Put the door over here. Market was due to close at midnight. Thanks a lot. See you later. Produce clerk Chad Graham was among the 14 employees working the night shift. When I finally finished in my department, it was just a couple minutes after midnight. Hey, Jessica, you ready to go home? They were all counting out the tails and getting things ready for the next day. Hi, Trish. Hey. Trish. How many texts do you have? 128. Pat Maldonado, the general clerk that night, decided to leave with me. Hi, lady, Chad. Bye now. Bye, Chad. Hey, Chad. See those two people were over in that last session there? I thought I was never going to get out. I want to get down! Get down! Get down! I just saw somebody's gun pointed at one of the checkers' heads. 9-1 emergency. There is a holdup at Bel Air on Sunrise and Kirby. Quick. Sunrise and Kirby? Yeah. Okay, can you see who's holding up the store? No, I'm outside the store. They came, they came in just as I was going out. There's cars up front up here. Okay, do they have weapons? Yes, they did. They have guns. How many people? I saw four people and there's... Four people? Are they all armed? What? Are they all armed with guns? Like they are, yes. Pamela Hardwick had been a Roseville police and fire dispatcher for four years. I had never had a robbery in progress before, which made me nervous right off the bat. I knew that anything could happen. Sergeant Rocky Rockholm of the Roseville Police Department was working as watch commander for only his fourth night. I was scared to death. I thought of all the things that could go wrong. I said a little prayer to myself when I was rolling to the call that, uh, dear Lord, please let this go well. Don't look at me! Stephanie Soulier had never been in a robbery before. There were just shadows. I didn't see anybody's face. I heard two other guys run to the office. And that's when I heard Tracy scream. She's like my little sister. And it scared me. It was just like somebody in my family was going to be hurt. Okay. okay. But in front of the store? I'm in front of the store and there's a car up here. Okay. He sees me and I don't want him to see me. Okay. He can't see where you are or, you, or he can? He's going forward right now. Okay. Are you, can you still talk to me? Yes. Okay, what's your name? He was really scared. Okay, he kept saying that there was a vehicle out front and it was pulling forward. What kind of guns do they have? They have like pistols? I, I just, yeah, like handguns. I just... Handguns? I was frightened because I didn't want to be responsible for him getting killed. They, they, oh God. Okay, try and calm down, okay? Are they still in the store? They're still in the store. I okay. Go on, get up! Go on! Come on! Come on! What part of the store are they in? Uh, the front of the store. There's the both doors. They're unlocked, but the, the police officer needs to pull them open by hand. Hang on for just a second. I was clueless to what was going on inside. You cannot hear a sound through that wall. It was frightening. It kind of hit me like, uh-oh. Seems like somebody might be dead or shot in there. Hurry up! Hold them! Hurry up! Hold them! Hold them! Bruce Hagler was the first officer to arrive. As I crossed the intersection, I shut off all my headlights. Warning to all the, uh, around the RVs, in front of the RVs, both into the uh, biller. You don't want to frighten the, the suspects inside the store because there was a potential for hostages. Sorry, there's apparently the subject is still in the store. Yeah, from on the Kensington side already. None of us really knew how many suspects were inside. Sam 39 to other units. Let's set a perimeter and see what happens. We've got to, somebody's coming out, somebody's running. Come down here. Okay, here's a cop. Okay, I see I see two cops at least. There's there's Okay. I'm talking to 911. Okay, there's police are coming to leave. I gotta go. Come on. Go way down there. Go way down there. 421, I'm in the rear, 1097 south side. 6-7, I'm almost 
97, I'll go to the back on the north side. Copy to the back to the north side. We had the store surrounded. When I saw the four suspects start running along the front, I, I literally stopped breathing. People running towards the door. Hold the air. Clear the air. They're running south. Please freeze. 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 We couldn't really see what was going on. And then we saw one guy running and nobody was chasing him. We yelled, there's one over here, there's one over here. Stop, run, son of a dog! Hold still! Hold still! Put your hands out where I can see him. Okay, arms where I can see him. The canine handler, fortunately, stayed on that side of the building. Had he also been sucked around to the front with the rest of us, we may have lost that one suspect. But all of them were captured, and no one was hurt. It was just good police work. And I can't say enough about the officers that were involved in it. They used their gut instinct, and they did everything right. Correction, contact Lieutenant Shockwater, advising we got four in custody. Copy. Although none of the employees was physically harmed, the ordeal was painful for all of them, but especially for head clerk Kenneth Pickard. I cooperated in every way with the guys, you know, to keep them from pulling the trigger. Every time they give an order, they had a gun in my face. There you go, there you go. The most frightening part was after I'd opened the safe and the leader put me down on the floor, and he said, count to ten. I pictured my wife and my unborn baby, and the flash of red and the darkness. How about this subject here? When I came back to the store and I saw that everybody was okay, Ken looked at me and he goes, you call 911? I said, yes. And he, he, was, he was just so happy, he's all right on, man. He gave me a big high five right there. I really didn't think that it was, you know, it was too good to be true. It was a blessing. The 911 system really worked. The four suspects pleaded guilty to armed robbery. Three of them were adults sentenced to jail. The fourth was a juvenile sentenced to a state youth facility. In the four months since the robbery, security at the Bel Air market has been tightened. That night I did not sleep at all. And the next day I, could, I didn't want to work. But I feel like that it's behind me, and I was thankful that nothing violent happened. If Pat and I would have left just a second later, then I would have been um, facing the floor like everybody else. Or if we had left sooner, then we never would have known what was going on. So the timing was perfect. Less than two months after the robbery, Kenneth and his wife celebrated the birth of their baby, Kelsey. She's grown, she's wonderfully healthy. And when you look into her eyes, it just tears your heart out to think that you might have missed out on something hey, like pizza, that. Dad, let's get some pizza. I'm happy that I'm alive to see my little girl. Next. The lady calmly said to me, Sir, I don't think my husband's breathing. I knew it was totally.